Okay, our last video uh, for the orientation. There'll be lots more videos uh, in the chapter content. Um, but we're going to talk together about, I'm going to help walk you through the paper one assignment and what you need to do so that you can start thinking about that. And I am uh, now in the view that you will also see. Um, and so if we click on the course materials page again, look at it again. I'm not sure why it's not working. There we go. Um, you'll see, right, that, and this is something you, you guys have been able to see for a week or so, uh, article submission for paper one, um, which already tells you that you have to submit an article for me um, on the 10th, um, even though the paper assignment's not due to the 24th. So these links um, are documents, and so if we click on that, it's going to open the paper assignment for us. And the first page of the paper assignment is uh, important background information. I know there's a temptation to think, oh, this isn't important. Let me skip ahead to see what I have to do. And you can skip ahead, but you better come back here um, because this, uh, this background information is here to set you up uh, to be able to successfully do the paper. And if you don't read it, you're not going to be able to. So it taught, so the purpose of this paper, this paper is more of a critical thinking assignment than a paper as you think of it. Um, most of your time will not be spent writing this. Most of your time will be spent in your research from the materials you need um, to do the paper. And you'll have three resources that you need to find um, on a topic. So the first thing you need to do is choose a topic within psychology. Psychology is defined as um, the scientific study of human behavior and mental process. So Anything about human behavior or mental process is fair game for the paper. Um, because you're going to be researching this a bit, I would pick something you actually care about. So something related to your major, something related to your personal life, to your hobbies. There's all kinds of literature out there about psychology and music or psychology and sports. Um, you know, maybe you're a nursing major, a pre-nursing major, and you're going to look at um, stress levels of nurses who work in different kinds of um, nursing contexts, right? So think, you know, or maybe you pick a disorder because somebody um, in your family has depression or ADHD or something like that. Um, so pick something though that you want to do a little research on. Um, once you do that, um, you're going to need to use these resources because you're going to need to find a peer-reviewed article. And so this helps you understand what a peer-reviewed article is, if you don't already know. Um, you're going to find that peer-reviewed article uh, using the library databases, and uh, there's a link in here showing you right there how to use the library databases to find a peer-reviewed article. Um, so it's part of why this is a really important page to read. Um, in addition to the peer-reviewed article that you're going to find, you're also going to have to find two websites, one that you think is good for academic use and one that is not. You're going to need this first link up here that's going to tell you how you assess that. Um, you've probably been taught some things in high school. Maybe some of you had a great education about what uh, makes for a good website or an academically sound website. Um, but I'm going to ask you to use the guidelines that um, our library has provided. So you're going to need to uh, take a look at that. So those, read this, follow those links, read the pages that the links bring you to, and then you'll be ready to think about what you need to do, right? And so the first thing you need to do, choose a topic, find a peer-reviewed article, find those two websites that fit the criteria um, that you met, and you have to submit the article to me. Um, from the databases, right? You have to find it in the databases. As, um, there is, off, when you're looking at the databases, off on the left-hand side, um, uh, a prompt to, that you can download it as a PDF. So you need to download the article to your computer, and then you need to submit that to me by October 10th to the Dropbox um, that we looked at. A Dropbox on Blackboard is a place where you can upload material documents to me, and we'll look at that together in just a moment. Um, so you're going to submit that to me by the 10th so that I can say, good choice, great article, this will work for the paper, or perhaps I'm going to say, this doesn't really meet the criteria and here's why, and this is what you should be looking for. Um, if that happens, right, you'll, you'll, um, you won't get credit for having handed in the article until you resubmit an article that will work, and then you will get credit. Um, so you know, if you get it wrong, you haven't missed the opportunity. It also means that the sooner you get it in to me, like you don't have to wait till the 10th, um, the sooner you get it in to me, the sooner you'll get feedback. And so if something has gone awry, um, you've got more time to fix it because the paper is due two weeks after the article is due to me. So if you're handing it in on the 10th and I'm getting back to you on the 12th or whatever date I'm getting back to you, 
um, then you'll, uh, you know, you have fewer days to find an art, a new article and then write your paper. Um, so, right, so then you need to find those two websites. Um, you have to answer this set of questions for each of your sources. So the first set of questions, these three questions here, are about your peer-reviewed article. So for your peer-reviewed article, you need to answer these three questions. And when you're setting up your paper, and this is what I mean by it not really being a paper as much as a critical thinking assignment, you should have three sections to the paper, one for the peer-reviewed article, one for each of your websites. And within that section, like tell me which source we're talking about. That could be like a heading. And then you can answer these questions that I have listed. You can answer them in bullet form if you want. You still need to write in full sentences. You still need to give good explanations and full explanations, but it doesn't have to be paragraph formatted. You can answer it so you can have a bullet that says, uh, maybe you repeat the question, write what type of research, and then you give me your answer. The you know, authors in this study carried out correlational research. I can tell this because blah, blah, blah. The data collection methods they used in the next bullet, right, were surveys. Uh, they surveyed 150 people. And then, you know, here the, the, the third question is kind of where your real critical thinking is. Um, use the information, using the information above, why is peer reviewed, why are peer reviewed sources trusted for academic work? And what about this specific article that you read makes it a good choice for academic information? That's going to go back to that first page and things I talked about in that first page of the assignment as well. Um, right. And then your set next section is going to be website number one. Um, give me the URL. Tell me it's good or not good for academic use. And then answer the four questions that you see listed here. Um, you know, some of these things you're looking at now and you haven't learned about experimental and correlational research or surveys or interviews. You haven't learned about objective or subjective evidence. You haven't learned about representative samples, right? And so um, obviously that is all, of all of this is something you'll know by the time you work on this because it'll all be in the first chapter. Um, and these are things that, um, you know, I'm part of what I'm assessing here is how well have you learned about research? How well can you, you know, can you find research? Can you read and understand research? Um, the second paper will push you to understand, to talk about research in more complex ways, but this is kind of the first pass um, that you get. You'll actually be able to use the same peer-reviewed peer article for your second paper if you find an appropriate peer-reviewed article, um, and so you don't have to find a new one if you don't want to, right? Um, the, the grading rubric is here. You are going to have to use uh, APA um, style uh, reference list in APA style. Um, and you'll see in a moment um, if I, when I scroll down that I've given you guide, guidance for that. Um, you don't have to apply the APA style to the rest of the paper. You will for paper two, but you don't need here. So I just want the reference list at this point. So, right, so grading, you get 30 points um, for um, the submission the, of an appropriate peer-reviewed article, and then 100 points for the paper as broken down here, right? And then this is what I was talking about. I give you kind of this cheat sheet for creating an APA style citation for your peer reviewed article. And then you kind of a little mock up of what that's going to look like. Um, and then there's links for APA style help for that you can use to create APA style um, citations on the reference page and format the reference page. Um, overall, um, these links will help you do that. Okay, so take a look. Again, we've got that practical questions thread where you can. Um, post questions about the paper, things you're not um, clear on. And that is better than emailing me individually, uh, partly because if somebody else asks your question, you can see their, the answer I gave, and then you've got it right there, and others can benefit from that, from the questions you post as well. So hopefully uh, that gives you a good start, and uh, we'll get to know each other um, after class starts on the 9th. I'll see you then.